The Creative Communities Programme is a programme that Inspiring Scotland is delighted to be involved in. We launched in 2020 with the Scottish Government Culture Division and Scottish Government Justice and it's part of the culture strategy. It's a brilliant programme uh, providing diverse types of cultural activity across Scotland's communities with people in the communities and for people in communities, um, showcasing the talents of artists and creatives and it's all about improving the well-being of people in communities across Scotland. I'm going to show you the technique and it's all going to be inspired by the harbour. Just practice how um, pressure. You'll get, you'll see as well if you like dig in, basically it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be really hard to cut. Part of the reason for doing this programme is to give kids a taste of metalwork and a taste of soldering and saw piercing and texturing and all the techniques that you wouldn't be able to do in Caithness, otherwise you'd have to go off to Aberdeen or Glasgow or Edinburgh. Our Creative Communities funded project is called Caithness Artists in Residence and it's a brand new community arts initiative which places artists right at the heart of their communities here in Caithness. My projects are about using crafts to tell a story. I've been collaborating with Befriending Caithness. They're a group of volunteers who connect with those who are isolated and vulnerable in the community. Joanne asked if I would do the uh, reminiscence workshop. A lot of people talked about school days, so it kind of evolved from there. But, you know, it, it's building confidence to the person who's sharing the story and giving them a sense of self-worth and builds their self-esteem. Creative Communities funding for us has been absolutely transformational. It's been really flexible um, and as a co-design project which we've co-collaborated with our communities and participants to design, that's really important. So it's been really an opportunity for us to learn and share with the other funded projects as well as we go. I'm so, so happy with painting and with group. You stay at a home is no good for health. Go to home and feel like anxiety in thing, but in coming in Mary Hill is help. The Museum of Things is a new partnership project between Mary Hill Integration Network and Glasgow Connected Arts Network. The main participants are asylum seekers and refugees. So the impetus from it really came from our service users telling us that they wanted to um, be part of projects where they could really represent themselves and tell their own stories. I came here bored and lonely, knowing nobody. So art can help you regain your lost consciousness, instill hope, instill passion, and help you develop mentally. Those art projects, from the outside, they might seem a luxury, but in, in, in the core of them, they are essential. The Creative Communities Fund help uh, refugees uh, belong in the community. They help them um, get uh, support, and eventually uh, that support uh, can translate it of, for the refugees to become um, a bigger part in the community. So like that's you on the stage. I don't know what I'm doing there. What were you doing there? I think I was, I think I was doing I think I was in my Billy Elliot bit. Oh, you were. That's right. You were doing Billy Elliot and Aberfeldy. Creative Communities Project in Aberfeldy opened up creative arts opportunities in a rural community for children with complex needs. Charlotte, what do you like most about workshops like? Uh, we get to do fun stuff. So within Aberfeldy there's very minimal resources and services for children and families with profound disabilities or learning disabilities or additional support needs. We have to access the towns like Perth and Dundee for that, which means an hour's travel away. It's so amazing for the children. They've had such a fun time and to see them grow and develop, to get self-esteem and confidence and to learn about their community and how they uh, see themselves in that community, just really want it to continue sort of throughout the whole life really. So here we go.
here in Kirkcaldy YMC, we've got quite a lot of resource. We've got good physical resources in the building, but what we don't have is we don't have budgets to pay for staff to deliver the services. Yeah, okay. It's all right, Al. It's okay, Alan. We can rise above it. Bring me my proper sound engineer. I'm only kidding. So, okay, so let's, let's go for it again. Take, uh, okay, so take one. The Creative Communities Fund has enabled us to employ five tutors. So two doing arts and crafts, we've got two doing music, and we have another tutor who delivers the watercolour class. I don't think there is anything like this project anywhere else locally. It's great for my anxiety, because like socially and that, it's just great to get everyone together and make new friends. This project, these staff, the way this works has saved my life a hundred percent. Right, can we go from once upon a time the hippopotamus lived on land? Three, two, one, go. Prior to this project, the number of children that used to visit the organization were around about 10, 15, but we've got over 60 now, you know, and this is the product that has attracted them to our organization. Something what's different about the Creative Fund or Inspiring Scotland is the ongoing support. Because when we are applying for funding, it's more than just the money that we're looking for. We had the idea of the project, yes, they gave us the funding, but we may not have had the experience and that's exactly what Spring Scotland did for us, teaching us steps, teaching us what to do. The things that I've learned, I'm now applying them with other funders. So we want to permanently set up a Heart Academy as a result of, of this project because we've seen the talent that are there and we just don't want them to fade away. It's music school is kind of in the grand hall, but who knows who's that tumor I can try? Ears get smeared, be exposed to clown and nunya. Tasks in line, the gang line, and the pay. The rhyme scheme, the schmitter, everything like that. And then I, I made, I translated it into English, and it doesn't sound the same at all. It sounds completely different. I've lived in a croft for all my life. Old traditions, they might not be used as much as more uh, as now, but uh, they, they can be relevant in, uh, for stuff such, such as fighting climate change. The School of Plural Futures is an alternative school working with an artist and a group of folk uh, from Sky, and together we're talking about all the issues that affect uh, people living here. It's made me more in tune to looking at how climate change is affecting my local area and the things that we can all do collectively within our small villages, within our island, but also looking at it as a global approach. Sitting on that bench in that cell where all my rights has been taken away, it was a hard piece of bread to swallow. Okay, everybody, nice to see you all. Thanks very much for coming. The Create Express Transform project that we run through Creative Communities is for people that we work with in the community and also up in HMP Grampian. I think for us it's that join with culture and justice because that's, that's everything that we do in adult services. It's phenomenal. Let's press record. You can't express just how much it does really change people's lives. Okay. Shmo encouraged me to get education, so I have decided to go to, to the Napier University and gonna be studying there. It's, it's, it's something out of the picture in previous, my previous life comparing to this one is it's just such a massive change. Yeah. You are. Bethany is a homelessness charity and I work as part of the Homeless and Prevention Division. This is my first time. There we go. This is his first time. What do you think of that? Good. 
Um, let's do another stencil. So one of the things that's been fantastic about Creative Communities funding is it really shows the value of placing creativity into the hearts of communities, building community, building skills, building confidence, and also being able to come alongside people in quite a soft way and maybe being able to signpost them onto further support. You just go under a couple and then you go over a couple. <laughs> Getting your arm tangled. Oh, I think you're standing on it. It's nice for like people to socialise and make new friends or do fun stuff because it likes help to make the community to be more joyful. Fantastic. Fantastic. The creative community funding, it's basically what allows us to give the, the well, to make the, these public art projects and also give the workshops for free. During the pandemic, I was delivering online classes to people who were living in flats on their own, not seeing anybody, maybe not with anybody local. One of the main functions was, was a way of people connecting with each other. Um, and, and very quickly, the group de dynamic developed into, into real friendships. The workshops are linked to producing pieces that are then installed in the public space, spaces that have been sometimes quite neglected and making a real difference. Bringing public art into Gorgie is a really good thing. I think sometimes it can be seen as like a little bit dreary, so having these things to like kind of boost the area um, and make it more interesting, make it more aesthetically pleasing, um, it could be really good. This Creative Communities funding has been extremely positive uh, for the artists of Gorgie Collective and really helps the community um, cohesiveness in a positive, uh, creative way. We're using the Creative Communities Fund to develop an intergenerational project where we could bridge the gap between older members of the community and younger members of the community. And then lockdown happened and we had to think more dynamically about how we were going to do that. And that's when we decided we would publish a book. Hello. Hello. On my deliveries, I've built up a good relationship with a lot of the younger people. And they've got to understand me and I understand where they're coming from as well. I just think it's, it's wonderful that we can work together. The older participants in the project are writing the stories about growing up in the Vale of Leaven and our younger participants working with Barry the Cat, the artist, are illustrating these stories. So she's Peggy Marlin. She's 82 years old and has two daughters and one son. What can we take out of that for illustration purposes? It's brought well, things back to my memory again now, you know. Kept me from going crazy. <laughs> With the lockdown. And if it helps the children, it's great. This one's about Peggy's life, going through the changes of the jobs that she went through. I really enjoy the book workshop because I can draw, which makes me happy and it makes me calmer and plus I like learning about other people's lives and history. A lot of people we work with don't have strong family connections or friendship circles and are maybe coming to us having lived in some capacity within the criminal justice system. Unbound is a community group that meets here at our space in the Gallowgate every Tuesday evening. Of course, uh, with the pandemic, We've had to do a lot of that work online. We walk the tight road. Waiting for the Daylight came about after one of our community members, Hannah, posted a creative challenge on the theme of beauty. Martin responded by posting a photo he'd taken of some swallows sitting on five power lines and noted that they looked a bit like notes, musical notes on a stave. Alison then played those notes on a piano and sent an audio recording of that. Community members were able to record themselves on their phone. We sort of made a choir section in the song. And worked on a set of lyrics, just bouncing thoughts and feelings and ideas off each other. 
The Creative Communities Fund is important because it recognises the role of the creative arts in supporting relationships. Crime is a result of disintegration, miscommunication, lack of understanding and the creative arts has a particular role to play in supporting relationships that build understanding and find new ways forward towards healthy society. Creative Communities was launched as part of the Scottish Government's culture strategy which launched back in February 2020 and we knew then that access to culture was hugely important as we move out of the pandemic there is a recognition that access to culture is perhaps even more important now as the inequalities of the pandemic have set in. The fund itself is worth £2 million and it is in conjunction with the Justice Department in the Scottish Government. And we think that's really important showing cross-portfolio working um, in terms of how people access culture and recognising the links across government departments. Creative Communities is part of the Scottish Government's commitment to making sure that we can offer opportunities for people to be involved in creative activities. And we found this is very beneficial for people's mental health. It gives them opportunities to engage in ways that they otherwise wouldn't do. By providing these creative opportunities, we are confident that we can build a better, more resilient Scotland, which is also more inclusive. The Creative Communities programme has demonstrated how important this type of connection for people in their communities is. We've seen such brilliant activity, which is so enriching um, when we involve people in arts and creativity. As we emerge from the pandemic, that type of enriching, rewarding activity, so good for people's wellbeing, is going to be needed now more than ever. <laughs>